Gravity Falls. If you've seen the cartoon, then you'll know there's a ton of esoteric and occult references. But if you're not familiar, here's a quick synopsis. The series follows twins Dipper and Mabel, who are forced to spend the summer in a little town called Gravity Falls, working with their great uncle or gruncle, Stan, in his store, The Mystery Shack. On the surface, Gravity Falls seems like a simple little town. But as you'll see, magic, scary creatures, and town folk who don't seem to fit in with the rest reveal this town has something far more nefarious going on. And in today's video, we're going to talk about the two most mysterious characters of Gravity Falls, Grunkle Stan and the demon Bill Cipher, and how they may be connected. But before we start, hit that like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. Now let's begin. In the Gravity Falls game, Rumble's Revenge, there's a secret cryptic message that reveals that there is a secret society in Gravity Falls. And there's a few things about Grunkle Stan that indicate he is a part of a secret society. Stan always wears a red fez with the distinct gold symbol. And this fez looks a lot like a fez worn by a branch of Freemasons called the Shiners. And this inspiration was confirmed by Gravity Falls creator Alex Hirsch. Grunkle Stan is also seen covering one of his eyes, but it's not always the same eye, so it's an unneeded covering, which is a sign coined by the alleged secret society group, the Illuminati, as a tribute to the Eye of Providence, which is the form that Bill Cipher takes. At the end of the Gravity Falls theme song, a cryptic message flashes, which when uncoded translates to, Stan is not what he seems. This all points to Grunkle Stan being a member or even a leader in a secret society, and possibly a group that takes part in dark practices, and it's this connection that we can make to Bill Cipher. Bill Cipher is described as an all-seeing eye dream demon who was summoned by Stanford Pines, the long-lost twin brother of Grunkle Stan. Bill Cipher is known for being mysterious and having a sadistic sense of humor. Bill is based on the all-seeing eye, most known on the back of the US dollar, a symbol seen and associated with esoteric and occult groups. It's known as the Eye of Providence, whose origins are traced back to the Egyptian Eye of Horus, and the depictions of the eye representing God and the Divine, and thus represents the relationship of God watching over the US, which is accompanied with the phrase, in God we trust, on the dollar bill. Conspiracy theories also indicate the Eye's connection to Freemasons, a secret society alleged to be a part of the nefarious group, the Illuminati. Suggesting the Eye's placement on the dollar bill is actually sinister, as it depicts the supreme group's watchful power over the country and the world. There is also the connection to Bill Cipher and the demon Baal. Baal is a demon in Abrahamic religions and is in the Lesser Key of Solomon, a grimoire for summoning demons, specifically the 72 demons summoned by King Solomon. He is also the first demon mentioned in the grimoire, the Pseudomonarchia Demonium. To summon the demons of Solomon, you must know the demon's sigil, which is a specific symbol connected to the demon and you must focus your intention upon it, among other things that are needed when conjuring or invoking demons. Bill Cipher is depicted as having his own sigil in the book to summon him. Much like Bill Cipher, the demon Bell is known to speak in a well-formed but raucous voice, and like Bill Cipher's henchmaniacs that serve under him, the demon Bell is a king governing over 66 demons. Bill Cipher is also an immensely powerful shape-shifting dream demon, which is a trait also shared with the demon Bell who is known as a spirit of shapeshifting, and appears sometimes as a cat, a toad, a man, and sometimes all these forms at once. Bill Cipher is also alleged to be the Invisible Wizard, or that the Invisible Wizard is a reference to Bill Cipher, always watching. Which is another connection to the demon Bale, as this demon knows and has the power to make those who invoke him invisible. But there is another theory. Another important detail that not only connects Grunkle Stan to Bill Cipher, but indicates that Bill Cipher is still alive and has possessed Grunkle Stan. 
In the finale, when Bill is trapped in Stan's mind, Bill utters a garbled sound, and this is the last thing Bill says. And it's not gibberish, he's speaking backwards. And when we play it in reverse, Bill says, A-X-O-L-O-T-L, -O -O my time has come to burn. Invoke the ancient power that I may return. Clearly, Bill Cipher doesn't plan to leave anytime soon. So where did Bill Cipher go? Well, the answer is in a Gravity Falls book called Dipper and Mabel and the Curse of the Time Pirate's Treasure. Although the book was titled as non-canon, creator of Gravity Falls Alex Hirsch stated the book does contain one enormous canon secret. In the book, Dipper and Mabel confront an all-powerful cosmic axolotl and are each granted one question. Dipper asks, what do you know about Bill Cipher? The axolotl pondered the question, and then he spoke. 60 degrees that come in threes, watches from within birch trees, saw his own dimension burn, misses home and can't return, says he's happy, he's a liar, blame the arson for the fire, if he wants to shirk the blame, he'll have to invoke my name. One way to absolve his crime, a different form, a different time. There are two important lines to pay attention to. The line, invoke my name, one way to absolve his crime, a different form, a different time. Bill Cipher invoked the axolotl before being erased to get redemption for his crime, which was trying to destroy the world. And the one way for his crime to be absolved would be to take a different form in a different time, which means Bill Cipher is still alive. But what form and what time is he in? Well, the second important line is, Mrs. Home and Can't Return says he's happy, he's a liar. Character Candy Chu once said, your uncle acts happy, but he is actually sad. So we can assume this is about Grunkle Stan. And Bill Cipher was trapped in Grunkle Stan's mind before being erased so it would make sense that he would have taken his form. But what about the different time? Instead of a future time, instead of Bill Cipher possessing Stan just at the finale's end, what if Bill Cipher was placed in a different form as Grunkle Stan and at a different time, which would be the past? What if Bill Cipher has been possessing Grunkle Stan throughout the whole series? Now bear with me. What if Bill Cipher has taken this different form as Grunkle Stan in a different time, the past, in order to stop the future form of himself as Bill Cipher the demon from destroying the world? This would be the redemption needed for the axolotl to grant him to be preserved and not erased. Bill Cipher and Grunkle also share a lot, and I mean a lot of parallels, throughout the show. First, there's the code mentioned before. That Stan is not what he seems. This is the first key. Clearly this means Stan is something or someone else. So assuming this entire time, Bill Cipher is Stan, it makes sense why there are so many parallels between them, even down to the things they say. In episode 2 is Trap, Grunkle Stan is deciding who will go outside and post the signs in the woods. He says, eeny, meeny, miny, you. And in episode Weird Mageddon 3 and Sock Opera, Bill Cipher says the same exact phrase, eeny, meeny, miny, you. This is a pretty distinct phrasing that not everyone would say, and no one else says it in the show. So it's curious that only Bill Cipher and Grunkle Stan have said it. But that's not where it stops, there's more. In the episode Boys Crazy, Grunkle Stan asks Robbie if he has been buying gold for the upcoming apocalypse. And in the episode Dreamscapers, Bill Cipher tells everyone to buy gold right before he disappears. In the episode Boss Maple, Grunkle Stan says TikTok, time's up kids. And in Sock Opera, Bill Cipher says TikTok. In Bottomless Pit, Grunkle Stan says Dipper's pain is funny. And in Sock Opera, Bill says pain is hilarious. Even more convincing is in the tale of two stands. In that episode, Grunkle Stan calls his brother Ford, Sixer. And in the last Mablecorn episode, Bill Cipher is in Ford's dream and also calls him Sixer. No one else has called Ford Sixer, and that's pretty distinct. It's only Grunkle Stan and Bill Cipher. Bill Cipher and Grunkle Stan also use a cane and show one eye to the world, which may have a double meaning as mentioned before, the unneeded eye covering being a reference to the Eye of Providence, which is the form that Bill Cipher takes. So what can we make of this? 
Well, from the clues we are given, it would appear that Bill Cipher invoked the axolotl to stop himself from being erased in order to redeem himself, and thus was revived in the past as Grunkle Stan so he could stop his future self from destroying the world. Perhaps this would make sense as to why Grunkle Stan, despite having his memory erased, is somehow able to remember everything from simply looking at a photo album. When citizens that have witnessed paranormal activity and have their memories erased, those few seconds or even several minutes are completely gone. They never come back to them. So how could Grunkle Stan recall his entire life just from a few photos? Perhaps it's not Stan after all. So what do you guys think about this theory? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any theories of your own? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and stay spooky everyone.